World War I, the world's first global conflict, the Great War, pitted the central powers of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire against the allied forces of Great Britain, the United States, France, Russia, Italy, and Japan. The introduction of modern technology to warfare resulted in unprecedented carnage and destruction, with more than 9 million soldiers killed by the end of the war in November 1918. During the First World War, Verdun was a fortified French garrison town on the River Meuse, 200 kilometers east of Paris. In December 1915, General Enric von Falkenhayn, Chief of Staff of the German Army, decided to attack Verdun. Although he admitted he would be unable to break through at this point on the Western Front, he argued that in defending Verdun, the Germans would bleed the French army white. The German attack on Verdun started on the 21st of February 1916. A million troops led by the Crown Prince Wilhelm face only about 200,000 French defenders. The following day, the French was forced to retreat to their second line of trenches. By the 24th of February, the French had moved back to the third line and were only 8 kilometers from Verdun. On the 24th of February, General Henri Philippe Patan was appointed commander of the Verdun sector. He gave orders that no more withdrawals would take place. He arranged for every spare French soldier to this point on the Western Front. Of the 330 infantry regiments, of the French army, 259 eventually fought at Verdun. The German advance was brought to a halt at the end of February. On the 6th of March, the German 5th Army launched another attack at Verdun. The Germans advanced three kilometers before they were stopped in front of the area around Mort Homme Hill. The French held the strategic point until it was finally secured by the Germans on the 29th of May and Fort Vox fell on the 7th of June after a long siege. Further attacks continued throughout the summer and autumn. However, the scale of the German attacks were reduced by the need to transfer troops to defend their front line at Somme. The French now counterattacked and General Charles Magnin became a national hero when the forts at Daumont and Vox were recaptured by the 2nd of November 1916. Over the next six weeks, the French infantry gained another two kilometers at Verdun. Verdun, the longest battle of the First World War, ended on the 18th of December 1916. Casualties for both sides totaled between 600,000 and 700,000 and were roughly equal. About half of all the casualties at Verdun were killed. At the end of August 1914, the three armies of the German invasion's northern wing were sweeping south towards Paris. The French 5th and 6th armies and the British Expeditionary Force, or BEF for short, were in retreat. General Alexander von Kluck, commander of the German 1st Army, was ordered to encircle Paris from the east. Expecting the German army to capture Paris, the French government departed for Bordeaux. About 500,000 French civilians also left Paris by the 3rd of September. Joseph Joffrey, the commander-in-chief of the French forces, ordered his men to retreat to a line along the River Seine, southeast of Paris and over 60 kilometers south of the Marine. Joffrey planned to attack the German First Army on the 6th of September and decided to replace General Charles Langrix, the commander of the 5th Army, with the more aggressive General Franquet de Osprey. The commander of the BEF, Sir John French, agreed to join the attack on the German forces. General Michael Menare and the French 6th Army attacked the German 1st Army on the morning of the 6th of September. General von Kluck wheeled his entire force to meet the attack, opening a 50 kilometer gap between his own forces and the German 2nd Army led by General Karl von Bollor. The British forces and the French 5th now advanced into the gap that had been created, splitting the two German armies. For the next three days, the German forces were unable to break through the Allied lines. 
At one stage, the French 6th Army came close to defeat, and were only saved by the use of Paris taxes to rush 6,000 reserve troops to the front line. On the 9th of September, General Helmuth von Moltke, the German commander-in-chief, ordered General Karl von Bülow and General Alexander von Koch to retreat. The British and the French forces were now able to cross the Marine. Despite encountering little opposition, the advance was slow and the armies covered less than 12 miles on that first day. This enabled Kluck's first army to reunite with Bulow's forces at the River Assigne. By the evening of the 10th of September, the Battle of the Marine was over. During the battle, the French had around 250,000 casualties. Although the Germans never published the figures, it is believed that German losses were similar to those of France. The British Expeditionary Force lost almost 13,000 men during the battle. The most important consequences of the Battle of the Marine was that the French and the British forces were able to prevent the German plan for a swift and decisive victory. However, the German army was not beaten and its successful retreat ended all hope of a short war. In May 1918, the Allied Supreme Commander, Ferdinand Foch, and the British Commander-in-Chief, Sir Douglas Haig, began making plans for a counter-offensive on the Western Front. It was decided to make a supreme attack just south of the Somme. The German offensive at Asnine in late May forced Foch to postpone the plan. When the German advance was brought to a halt at the Marine, Foch returned to his plan of a counteroffensive. Foch put Haig in overall charge of the offensive, and he selected General Sir Henry Rawlinson and the British 4th Army to lead the attack. The main objective of the operation was to capture the Amens line between Mirecourt and Haggist. Men and every available tank was moved to Rawlinson's sector. This included 72 Whippet and 342 Mark V tanks. Rawlinson also had 2,000 artillery pieces and 800 aircraft. The German sector was defended by 20,000 soldiers and were outnumbered 6 to 1 by the attacking troops. The Amman's offensive on the 8th of August 1918 was an immediate success. The tanks followed by soldiers met little resistance, and by mid-morning, Allied forces had advanced 12 kilometers. The Amman's line was taken, and later, General Enrich Ludendorff, the man in overall charge of the German military operations, described the 8th of August as the black day of the German army in the history of the war. After two days, the advance slowed down. Once again, the British Army had trouble with their tanks, and by the 12th of August, only six were in full working order. The Germans had also sent 12 divisions to the sector to fill the gap in the line. On the 15th, Sir Douglas Haig brought an end to the attack and began preparing for a new offensive at Albert. These were simply three important battles that happened during World War I.